In the second set of notes in section 8.3, we have two proof examples to work through. Eventually, I'd like you to pause the video, work through these two proof examples on your own, and once you're ready to compare your answers with mine, you can hit play again. For the second proof, I'd like you to think about two different ways to prove those triangles similar. We'll discuss those two different ways towards the end of the video. For the first proof, you should write down the given, which states that the ratio of sides AB to DE is equal to the ratio of sides BC to EF, which is equal to the ratio of sides AC to DF. That law and proportion is saying that the ratios of the measures of the corresponding sides of those two triangles are equal, which is enough to say that the two triangles are similar by side-side-side similarity. Just like side-angle-side similarity, we typically do not use side-side-side similarity in a two-column proof but I just wanted to show you what it looks like here. Now I'm going to add some numbers onto these diagrams to just give you a better idea. You'll see some application problems in your textbook like this. So let's say you have these numerical values on the sides of the triangles, you know the side lengths. We can then clearly see that the larger triangle is two times the smaller one. So each side is in a ratio of one to two, which is enough to say that those two Triangles are similar by side-side-side similarity. We'll see more problems like that in the near future. For this next proof, we should have recognized that from those parallel segments, we could get some congruent angles if we look for our transversal. And we actually can get two pairs of corresponding congruent angles. So we can say that those red angles are congruent, angles RQS and RPT, and then the yellow angles are SQ and RTP, because if lines are parallel, then the corresponding angles are congruent. There we have two pairs of congruent angles, which is enough to say that the two triangles are similar by angle-angle. Now, I also told you to think about a second way to go about this proof. Did you have a chance to think about that? Let's take a look at this second method together. Instead of using both pairs of corresponding angles, we could have just mentioned the red corresponding angles, or the yellow one, whichever ones you'd like. But then since the smaller triangle RQS is physically inside of the larger triangle RPT, we can use reflexive property on now that yellow angle, R, because those two triangles share that angle. And that would give us our second pair of congruent angles to say that the triangles are similar by angle-angle. I wanted to show you this second method just because in some of the proofs that you come across, you will have to use the reflexive property on a shared angle. And we haven't seen this in a little while, so I just wanted to give you a reminder about that. 